I won't be going, this is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, happy Saturday. Let's do a blog here recapping 2023 in the stock market. Because you guys know my Saturday blog, I like to talk a little bit more broader based, not as much real estate, a little bit more about mental uh, mindset and attitude in life and for uh, keys for success. I also like to talk a little bit about my, uh, my other love, which is investing in the equities in the stock market. So 2023, we'll summarize here as uh, climbing a wall of worry. It was an incredible year in the stock market. I don't know about you guys, you can comment here. Your portfolio should be pretty much, pretty near an all-time high. Mine broke an all-time high because, of course, I'm always contributing more money every year in the form of um, uh, paying myself first from my working income. But then I've got six figures now coming in from my dividend income. So, uh, you know, that's, you know, even if the market stayed flat, it's growing at a fairly good pace for me at my age now. But, you know, climbing a wall of worry, nobody predicted uh, the market, uh, equity markets to turn out like this in 2023. Uh, my overall portfolio was probably, I mean, I had some huge winners like Meta, Netflix, you know, all my tech stuff, Apple, Google, all up between 50 and 150%. Uh, NVIDIA, Eli Lilly was a huge winner for me that I never expected with this new weight loss drug. Um, Eli Lilly now is a, I've owned it for a long time, is a 15 bagger for me, 1500% return. But I wasn't expecting that with the stodgy old Eli Lilly. It didn't do anything or very little for five or six years. It's just been the last 18 months here that it's gone ballistic. But all-time highs, I'm sure you guys are the same way. Uh, if you listen to the pundits on TV at, uh, early or late in 2022 at Christmas time, they would have said, get out of your stocks, sell stocks, go into the GICs and the term deposits, you can get 5%. And unfortunately, a lot of people, they time markets, they don't have a, a, a system or a, a game plan in place that I do and I tell you guys to have, which is just simply buying and holding quality uh, dividend paying stock, the best of the best in tech stocks, and then just index invest. Uh, buy the S&P 500, the Triple Q, uh, the, the uh, XEI, the XIC in Canada, the VIG, which is one of my favorites, the VIG. And just hang on to it, reinvest the dividends and keep uh, and keep it going. And, but a lot of people, of course, got out of those names and went into 5% uh, GICs. So they got a 5%, they thought they were gonna be doing great, it's guaranteed money, which is great, I get it, but they lost out on 40, 50, 60% returns in the stock market. And I got news for you, we're probably not going to repeat that in 2024. That's how stock markets and how real estate markets go. They go in these crazy spurts where it doesn't do anything for two years and then it goes up 50% or you know goes up one or 2% and then has a 15 or 20% return. This is why you always wanna be in the markets to capitalize on those jolts that hit. I mean, this year, this Chris Santa Claus rally you know, there were some days where the Dow was up a thousand points over a two or three day period. You don't want to miss those days. And it's why I've given you guys this stat before. You know, if you miss the 10 best days in the S&P 500, just the 10 best days, your returns are cut in half. If you miss the 20 best days of the year, your, your returns will be zero, in, flat. So, <laughs> This is why you can't front run or time a market. And don't take my word for it. It's all out there. Just spend that 100 hours, read some books, start with my book, and you guys will, will come up with the same game plan. You'll realize that the game plan I use is the only one that's really going to work. So a few other things, you know, a couple of things that I want to give you guys is some quick tidbits here, some quotes from the end of the year here from some of the guys I follow on Twitter and then some of the newsletters I follow. This guy, he calls himself the market hustle on Twitter. He goes, the people killing it in life are the people playing the long-term game, not the people trying to find some sort of magical shortcut to riches that doesn't exist. Again, yeah, you buy and hold. That's the way you do it, guys. This one from Ben Carson. I, fo I follow this guy on Twitter as well. He's a financial uh, writer. Um, Since 1926, the U.S. stock market has been positive on 56% of all trading days. So 56% of the time, every trading day, it's positive. 63% monthly. 75% of the one-year returns. 75%. This was one of those years where it was really up. Sometimes it's only up two or 3%. Sometimes it's up 45 or 50. I think the NASDAQ was up about 45% this year. 
This is why you always want to be in the market. I would put this same 75% uh, yearly return, it's up 75% of the time for Vancouver real estate. I've been in the Vancouver real estate market for coming up to four decades now, and that's about right. Uh, some years it's flat, some years it's only up one or 2%, other years it's up 15 or 20%. But probably 75% of the time in the lower mainland, uh, real estate is up. And this was another one of those years. The overall broad market for Metro Vancouver, prices were up about uh, just uh, over 5%. 88% of the five-year returns, it's up. 95% of the time, a 10-year return is up. 95% of the time and 100% over 20 years. Same thing in Vancouver real estate, guaranteed. I know some guys that throw out guarantees. Well, that's a guarantee. You buy a house today, hold it for 20 years, it's gonna be worth more in 20 years, 100% of the time. So guys, the, I've seen this stat many times over the last few decades here. That's why I became a don't try and get cute, don't try and time markets. I just buy and hold the markets for long periods of time. And I just keep adding more dry powder as I get it from my working income and as the dividends flow in, you know, as some people would call it as a as kind of like a roast beef on a spit dripping cash, I just keep reinvesting that. And that's all there is to this. Unfortunately, though, another guy who did a summary on uh, the Canadian markets, he came up, uh, produced a BMO study from Bank of Montreal. Only 63% of Canadians have a TFSA currently. 63%. Terrible. 56% of those people that have a TFSA are holding cash 100% in the TFSA. Uh, terrible. Uh, a third uh, say that the cash is over 75%. A third. Uh, only half even know that a TFSA can hold non-cash assets, so you can put equities and stocks in a TFSA. This has to change, guys. This comes down to the, what I've talked about many times. I talk about it in my book. You have to put in that 100 hours, just the 100 hours to learn the basics of investing, saving for retirement, how the TFSA works, how the RRSP works. Most Canadians now, from what I hear, I don't know, I haven't had cable for 10 years, I don't watch TV, but apparently most people watch about 30 to 40 hours a week of TV, which I find baffling to me, uh, but hey, whatever you're into, but. That means that if you just cut your cable here for three or four weeks, you would have that hundred spare 100 hours to invest in yourself and learn the basics. Start with my book on Amazon. Go on the back of that book and buy some of the other ones I recommend. Go to a site like Canadian Couch Potato and spend 15 or 20 hours on that website learning the basics of taxation, TFSA, RRSPs, how they're taxed, how dividends work, how to read a, a financial statement, uh, 100 hours and you'll know everything you need to know for financial success. That's all it's going to take, 100 hours. You'll Once you do learn those bases, you're going to realize that index investing is probably going to be the easiest way to do it, which I recommend, and you'll beat 90% of the active investors, and that's all there is to it. But that's it, 2023, climbing a wall of worry. I think 2024, I think it'll probably be a pretty good year again. I don't think it's gonna be as good as what it was for 2023 in the stock market. I could see the real estate market being better than it was in 2023, but it held up pretty well. Um, and I'm just gonna continue the same thing that I've always done. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you know, I put my money where my mouth is all through 2023. I occasionally would tweet some of the stocks and ETFs that I was buying. And there'd always be some negative comments in there. Are you nuts buying Royal Bank and TD and Schwab High Dividend and the VIG? Don't you know a crash is coming? You know, you can put your money in a GIC and earn 5%. Listen, that may or may not happen and I was totally fine with that. Every stock and every ETF I purchased last year, I was fully aware that, hey, maybe I am buying it too high, but hey, it's off its highs. Some of these were trading at 52 week lows. They were yielding me four, five, six percent. I'm okay with it. I'm going to buy it. I'm not selling it tomorrow or the next year or the year after that. I'm going to keep these holdings for 10, 15, 20 years. I may never sell them and just live off the dividends and the cash flows that they produce for me. So I was totally comfortable with that because I had a game plan and I don't stray from my game plan regardless of what some guy says on CNBC or Bloomberg or on Twitter. And you guys have to do the same thing. Start with my book. It shows you how I did it, how I became a multimillionaire at a pretty young age and I didn't do anything fancy. 
What I'm doing will work for you guys as well. It's a really simple formula, but you have to stick with the game plan. Successful investors don't get spooked and last year sold all their stock and went into term deposits. Because if you did, you lost out on a record, one of the best years I've had in a, 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 probably the top five that I've had in the last 20 years was 2023. And nobody saw it coming. I'm Owen Big Line. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all my new subscribers. Have a good weekend. See you guys next week.